We are Alex and Elena, a couple in our mid-twenties working towards financial independence and self-sustainability. Follow our journey as we grow, build, fix, and learn the skills we need to get us there. During the last storm, a big portion of this tree already fell down. So it was a good sign that it is time just to take down the whole thing. It's totally overgrown with ivy. There is absolutely nothing alive about this tree at all. But it's very tall and it's probably gonna be a little bit dangerous to get down. Got both my saws out, my old steel 028 AV for the big stuff, with the 20 inch bar and my little DeWalt 12 volt with a 12 inch bar for the small stuff. Hold up, I thought this was supposed to be about an echo saw, not a steel. Well, it turns out this day was the last rodeo for my old Steel 028 AV, and it ran so poorly that it drove me to the edge of buying a brand new echo saw. I'll fast forward and spare you the details. Luckily my friend Will was over was able to use his little tiny saw to take the one limb down that we did this day. And here's the steel just being a piece of junk. So I sold it for 120 bucks on Marketplace and decided that because of all the ivy and the size of this very dead tree that it was best left to our tree guy. But in the meantime, I went out and bought this. After a ton of research on saws, I landed on the Echo CS620PW. It's technically a professional grade saw and comparable to the Steel MS362, but for $200 less. It also comes with a five year warranty compared to Steel's too, and includes a lot of other features that you don't get, such as a full wrap handle and double bucking spikes. It's got a decompression valve to make starting easier, summer and winter settings for the carburetor, a translucent fuel tank, and easy air filter access. I decided in my saw I'm only going to ever run premix fuel just for consistency and reliability. It's also got a nice large felling site which I ended up using a lot sooner than I thought I was going to. Okay, you just watch. Quickly realizes her hose is not long enough to reach the fire, decides she needs to reposition, slams it back into reverse. Where's Dad? Well, we had some tree work done, and finally came the time to clean up all the brush and of course this neighboring dead tree caught an ember just right and it started burning got firefighter Elena Well, I think we got the forest blaze contained. This was the first thing I had to cut down with my new Echo 620PW. And I can honestly say it cut through it like butter. Um, granted, half the tree was rotten, so can't give it too much credit yet. It's the Mason Dixon Acres fire rig. Firefighter Repepi with her garden, their watering can. <laughs> Firefighter Mark. Brought out the hose truck. We can do the neighbor's lawn if we have to. We don't want to. Look at that technique. It's gonna fall. 
It's incredible technique. Look at that hose action. Well, we learned a valuable lesson today, and that was... Don't start a fire too close to a dead tree. Make sure your dead trees are far away from your bonfire circles. Next to it's time to take down the big mama. Honestly, running this saw is a dream. I'm just gonna let it speak for itself for a little bit. Full disclaimer, I'm an amateur chainsaw user, but this is by far the most powerful and smoothest operating saw that I've used. The only con I noticed of this saw is that it does seem to use fuel a little quicker than I'm used to with the chainsaw, but it is a 60cc saw, so maybe that's to be expected. I don't really have much comparison. The double bucking spikes really make a difference for cuts like this, the Humboldt, where you need to plant the saw on the tree and cut at an upwards angle. The full wrap handle is also really useful for situations like that. Well, I've been cutting for about an hour with this thing through both some rotten and some hard wood, and I can say for a fact that it absolutely rips. It does not run out of power even for a second. Coming from my old steel AV28, this thing is like completely different league essentially. It really does a solid job and the 24 inch bar is really nice too. Cutting through big logs like this, being able to do it in one pass is really nice. It saves some time and energy having to roll logs around and come at it from different angles. So overall, I highly recommend the saw. I feel like it would hold its own against any other pro grade saw such as the steel MS362 including the 24 inch bar upgrade, which I would highly recommend by the way. This saw was about $635 out the door, which is about $200 less than the steel model. And I feel like it was well worth the money. That's all I really have to say about the saw for a first impression. I might do an update here in a year or two after I have more chance to use it extensively. But for now, I'm gonna finish cutting this big guy up and we'll see you next time.